Thank you for the introduction, Adam. Um, and uh, thank you for having me on uh, to this event. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and uh, uh, talk about should you be uh, an engineering manager? Uh, so hopefully people can see the slides OK. Um, yes, sir. Did yeah, you have a, so, a full, could, can you make that full screen there? Uh, yeah. Um, actually, this is as full as it can be. <laughs> oh, not a problem. No worries at all. Go for it, Vincent. Ready when you are, mate. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, should you be an engineering manager? Um, it's a question that I asked myself, uh, you know, all those years ago. Um, and so I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Um, and so before I go on, um, I will tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, who am I? Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, as Adam uh, mentioned, I'm going to be of engineering at uh, Later.com. Um, Later founded as kind of the first to market uh, Instagram scheduler, um, you know, about eight years ago now. Um, it was formerly uh, called uh, Latergram. Uh, and uh, now we actually, you know, more than just a simple uh, Instagram tool. Uh, we uh, kind of uh, work with uh, all the major uh, social media networks. Um, we can uh, basically schedule and, and plan um, your posts across. Um, we also have a separate product uh, called Linking Bio. So for those, those of you who are familiar with uh, Instagram, uh, you know that there's only one link that you can put in your profile. Um, and so Linking Bio is a product that allows you to integrate uh, your e-commerce and uh, into into your uh, Instagram. Um, and so uh, for myself, I actually uh, joined the company not too long ago. Uh, prior to that, I was in a, in a different company uh, called Vizier. Um, but here at Later, I mean, I uh, work with approximately uh, 50 engineers, um, and we look after basically all the uh, engineering uh, stuff. Um, and so that includes, you know, new product development, um, you know, new features in, in the existing product, um, and also, you know, some of the infrastructure uh, pieces as well. Um, and so there are kind of four uh, main teams in, in our company. Um, so in the engineering uh, side, um, so front end, back end, uh, QA, and mobile. A uh, little bit about my journey um, to uh, becoming a VP, a VP of engineering. Um, and so this kind of relates to uh, the topic of, of tonight, which is, uh, um, you know, uh, should you be uh, an engineering manager if you're an individual contributor? Um, so here's my, my journey. Um, so I started off as um, kind of a uh, individual contributor. Um, so I graduated from uh, SFU, uh, Summer Fraser University uh, in BC, um, and so focusing on uh, computer science um, and did a bit of uh, uh, what is known as bioinformatics. Um, so kind of combining the use of technology in, uh, in the area of biology, uh, looking at you know CT images and stuff like that, uh, and uh, received uh, an award um, from uh, uh, the Governor General um, and a silver medal um, to for kind of the uh, uh, I guess top student in, in the university, um, and then uh, so in terms of my individual contributor journey, um, so at the Trident Arts I worked on uh, mobile games. Um, so back then, uh, mobile games are not games on the phone. Um, there are no smartphones yet, um, so it's actually. Uh, phones of uh, you know mobile games on on the, um, you know Nintendo uh, or uh, uh, Sony devices, um, and so I was uh, uh, focusing on animation, uh, so animation engineer, um, animation tools. I worked on you know, FIFA, one of the uh, top selling games still, um, and then I also worked at uh, Apple. Um, so uh, you know there, I, mean, I was uh, working on the product really suite, um, worked on tools and some of the infrastructure. Um, you know, uh, iCloud.com, also something that I've worked on. And in the last uh, close to a decade almost, um, I worked at uh, Vizier. Um, and so Vizier is a company that focuses in the analytic uh, yeah, domain. Um, so uh, we have uh, products in uh, you know, analytics. Um, we focus on uh, the HR area, uh, human resources. Um, and so majority of my journey uh, from kind of a team lead type position to uh, uh, VPE, uh, VP of engineering, uh, really happened there. Um, and then uh, now I'm at uh, later.com. Um, and so uh, took over approximately 50 engineers from uh, CTO. Um, and uh, I, mean, I report to CTO. Um, and uh, the goal here uh, for myself is to uh, kind of scale the team to the next level. So that's kind of a little bit about uh, my journey. Um, and so 
why am I telling all of this? I mean, I think uh, the question that I want to uh, help answer is, you know, should you be uh, an engineering manager or should you be one day become a VP uh, uh, of engineering? Um, and so before I go there, uh, I would say that um, being an individual contributor is actually uh, a lot of fun. Um, and so I myself may share a little bit of my uh, kind of started as a uh, IC, uh, individual contributor. Uh, I started writing code when I was really, really young. Uh, started at six years old. Um, and uh, I don't know how many people here know GW Basic, what that is. Um, and writing code really is uh, quite a bit of fun. Um, and it, it really still is. Um, and there's actually a lot of things that are uh, great about being IC. And you're probably like, hey, Vincent, I thought like, you know, this talk is about, you know, uh, should you become a man, uh, you know, software development manager? And you know, why is it awesome to be a dev manager? Uh, but I think it's actually uh, important to take a look at uh, what is actually great about being an IC, and are you really willing or ready to leave some of these things behind? Um, and so, uh, one really good thing about being an individual contributor, a software developer uh, that's not responsible for a team, is flexibility, um, and you really are not tied down with meetings. Um, you can work anywhere you want. Um, and many of you would say like, you know, with the, uh, you know, a lot of companies are switching to remote or hybrid. Uh, isn't that the case for managers too? And the answer is really not really. Um, uh, the other uh, benefit or great thing about being an IC is uh, you're able to go into the zone. Um, and so, you know, those of you who are you're coding, I mean, I think this is self-explanatory. Um, being a manager is very different. Your schedule is oftentimes very fragmented. Um, there's no such thing as leave this long. Um, and being able to keep up with the latest technology um, and hands-on working on them. Um, and that's also one other good thing about being an IC. Um, and last but not least, it's really, uh, you really don't have to deal with kind of uh, politics or bureaucracy or or, or, or people, really, I mean, I guess. Um, and uh, some of the things, um, you also get paid uh, a lot. Um, so uh, as many of you know, um, and uh, no doubt get a lot of calls on, on LinkedIn and, and messages from recruiters. Um, and uh, you know, individual contributors can get paid quite a bit of money. Um, and, uh, and, you know, as of right now, I mean, I would call it a developer's market. Uh, I'm sure, you know, all the recruiters in, in the room uh, would, would know what that means. Um, basically, developers um, can pretty much uh, name your price uh, if you're great. Um, and so there's just like a shortage of uh, great developers right now. Um, and so having said all of that, um, you know, why then become a manager? Why do you even kind of uh, encourage people um, to to uh, take on leadership role and uh, and for that matter why why become a VP uh, one day um, so before I get there um, and this is kind of my uh, approach to to tell you why uh, being a manager is great um, I will also tell you about why being a manager is perhaps not so great um, and so so uh, I want to bust some uh, myth first. Um, and so uh, myth number one is um, if you become a manager, you'll get loads and loads of money. Um, and certainly not, uh, you know, Scrooge McDuck uh, style. So that's certainly a myth. Um, a lot of times if you are uh, an individual contributor, a senior developer, um, you actually get uh, paid more, potentially even uh, more than your, your manager. Um, and especially, you know, if you are uh, at a you know, top company, uh, top software company, for example, um, you can certainly get paid quite a bit. Um, and so if you're hoping to become a manager to get a higher kind of salary, um, you know, that may actually kind of disappoint you. Second myth, um, I would say, is uh, you have a lot of power. Um, so certainly not. Um, and so, uh, in fact, if you are um, on an individual contributor, if you're a developer, um, you, you actually have a lot of power in terms of defining the, the technical side of things. Um, and in fact, I mean, as uh, you become more and more senior um, in the kind of corporate ladder, for example, um, you, you actually get less, uh, less power uh, almost. Um, and that's the reason for that is because 
the, the further, uh, more similar you are, um, the more kind of sort of like disconnected you are with the uh, individuals who are working on particular features or particular technical aspect of things. Um, and, um, you know, uh, as uh, uh, any uh, tech manager would, would tell you, um, people, um, you know, developers, I mean, they respect you not because of your title, uh, they respect you because of your technical abilities. Um, so the more senior you get on your manager track, um, almost the less power you get just because of um, you don't have that face time with, with individuals. Um, and oftentimes, like developers, engineers, I mean, they, they're uh, intelligent workers, right? Um, and so they don't really take orders. Um, so you can't really tell them what to do. Um, and so it actually takes a lot of convincing and, and influencing uh, in order for, for things to happen. Um, and so I would say it's not like you have a lot of power. Myth number three, um, and so uh, it is actually not a walk in the park, um, and you you can rarely control your calendar. Uh, a lot of times for managers, um, you get uh, pulled in into various different meetings, um, and so just going for a walk during the day is actually difficult, and especially you know pandemic time and you know um, working from home or remotely. Uh, you would think that you can actually kind of um, go for a walk when when it's when it's like sunny outside. It's actually can be challenging just because you could potentially get calendar invites and um, you know, have back to back uh, meetings. Um, and so, if your hope is that you know becoming a manager, you have great control for a calendar, um, probably would uh, disappoint you. Um, and then you know something I touched on before. Um, you know you think that you may get uh, respect from people um, automatically. Um, and that is not that that's going to be not going to be the case. Um, yeah, you, you know, as a manager, you still have to earn that respect. Um, and uh, oftentimes, people will challenge your decisions. Um, and you know, uh, hopefully, if you're a good manager, I mean, you also uh, you know expect challenges and welcome those challenges as well. Um, and people will always try to um, kind of find out whether you are as good as you say you are uh, on in terms of your technical uh, abilities. Um, and so, uh, so you don't get automatic respect. Right? Um, so, having said all of these things, um, why then become a you know development manager or so a software manager? It seems like a really uh, a lot. It requires a lot of work and seems like a lousy uh, you know role. Um, there are a few things. Um, so, uh, first thing, I mean, I would say um, is the impact. Um, so, becoming a, a manager, a dev manager. Um, you have a lot of impact. Um, the impact that you have is no longer just at the individual level. Um, you, you have impact on the team. You have impact on the, uh, the department. You have the, uh, impact on the uh, organization as, uh, or, or the business. Um, and so, um, you know, many uh, uh, great developers, uh, they would uh, consider themselves, uh, maybe not publicly, but privately, that they are uh, 10x developers and they're better than, um, you know, than having to, to lead, lead a team and so on. But if you think about it a little bit more, um, even if you're a 10x developer, um, if you have, let's say, a team of 10 people, um, and, you know, if you kind of make them more efficient um, just by, you know, 10%, 20%, um, you actually can generate a lot of impact. Um, and to be honest, like, you know, uh, the ability to influence, um, you know, the direction of the product, the direction of the uh, architecture, um, and, you know, to be able to build something from scratch is actually very, very satisfying. Um, you know, I think a lot of us get into the, the field of engineering or development, software development, because of building the sense of accomplishments that you get from building something. Um, and so instead of building code, um, you'll be building teams. Um, you'll be kind of putting teams together, individuals who have never worked together before, and you're trying to find a way for them to work together. Um, and so that's actually uh, very uh, satisfying. Um, and, and the impact that you make uh, is very uh, visible too. Um, and so, you know, individuals who are not good at running teams and managers who are not good at running team, um, the productivity from the team uh, was very obvious, um, and so um, and, and so and, and vice versa as well. So impact is definitely one. 
The other uh, that is uh, you know reason for becoming a manager is allows you to almost build networks. Um, and so um, many of us, myself included, a bit of an introvert. Um, so uh, you know, if I'm not being forced or encouraged to kind of actively build network or reach out, um, probably more comfortable kind of uh, being kind of by myself sort of thing. Um, and so, unfortunately, I mean, not unfortunately, but fortunately, I guess, um, for being a manager, um, that is a, a little bit of a, uh, you need to be able to, to reach out and build network. Now, the reason for that is because, um, you know, uh, part of being a manager, a major part of being a manager is also on the recruitment side. Um, and recruitment um, it is one. Um, the other is also retention, making sure that your team uh, is happy. Um, so people skills, very important. Um, and so uh, through that, I mean, I actually, as, at least for myself, um, I have some new perspective to the world uh, since I've become a, a manager. Um, and, uh, you know, this is especially important too, because like, um, you know, uh, you know in, in a pandemic setting, um, people no longer kind of see each other uh, in person uh, day to day. Um, and having kind of a almost like a mandate or a reason for people to uh, for you to meet uh, new people um, is, is is good. Um, and you know, so building the ability to build network um, as part of your role and responsibility um, is is one thing that is um, different about being a manager. Another uh, reason for being becoming a manager is, um, you know, the sense of accomplishment. I sort of alluded to this uh, before as well. Um, so not just, you're not just building code uh, anymore. You're building new products, uh, you're building new businesses, you're building new teams. Um, and uh, and you, you, you basically work on, you know, a bigger scope, more than specific, specific features anymore. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you're, you know, individual contributor you work on specific areas, um, and you may not have the kind of uh, landscape to see kind of across different areas, um, trying to understand how different technology work together, different pieces of the code work together. Um, and so it is actually uh, very satisfying as well. So, you know, being able to see new products being launched, um, and you can sort of uh, feel like you, you played a role in that. Um, and so that's something that, that is different, um, uh, you know, from being an uh, individual contributor. And lastly, um, I would say, you know, being, becoming a manager I mean, also allows you to, to explore a little bit uh, on the technology side, actually. Uh, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, being a manager, um, you also have to think about what makes the team successful, effective, efficient. Um, and so um, you have kind of the opportunity or license to kind of think outside of the current uh, framework, the technology or the way of organizing. Um, and so you have to almost keep, uh, you know, studying, keep being a student um, and learning all these things um, that are perhaps not just strictly on the technology front. Um, and so keeping yourself up to date. Um, and so, you know, if you enjoy learning, uh, this is also kind of uh, very uh, exciting. Um, and so, uh, I mean, I listed a bunch of reasons um, of why one should be a manager. Um, and uh, and uh, hopefully uh, you got some insights about that. Um, and uh, uh, obviously, uh, so this is uh, a reference to um, being a manager uh, or becoming a manager is not joining the the dark side, um, uh, as you know, some of the uh, uh, I remember a long time ago when, when I uh, you know was chatting with uh, some friends about becoming a, a manager. It's like, oh, you're going to the dark side. Um, not really. I mean, to be honest, I mean, uh, being a great engineering manager is difficult, uh, but also very rewarding. Um, and uh, being able to kind of see the impact, positive impact that you have, uh, you are going to make or being able to make, make um, uh, to the teams um, is actually, uh, you know, very, very powerful. So uh, I'm gonna uh, leave this up here um, and go ahead and check, uh, check the chat and see if there are uh, uh, questions. And One of the questions I had for you there, Vincent, uh, as a VP, 
what percentage of your role is kind of hands-on coding, if any, and what percentage is kind of managing, mentoring, uh, motivating, and leading the team these days? Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, so I think it really depends on the, the size of the team. Um, and so uh, a lot of times, I mean, like there are uh, VP of engineering, you're leading teams that are uh, really big. Um, so maybe hundreds of people. Um, there are also VP of engineering um, that are leading teams that are relatively small, uh, maybe even less than 10 people, less than five. Um, so I think it's less so about, you know, whether you are uh, a VP or not, or a manager or not. Really, it's about the team size that you're responsible for. Um, and I think if you have a team, let's say, you know, less than 30 uh, people, um, that's probably the time when you would actually be more hands-on. Um, so maybe looking at pull requests, um, pull, doing pull reviews, uh, or maybe even taking on a feature or two. Um, obviously, not uh, you know, features not on critical paths, um, you know, that hands-on coding. Um, in terms of like, if as you're getting uh, to a team that is you know, bigger, um, so let's say you know more than 30 people, 50 people, 60 people, 100 people, um, majority of the time would be on managing and mentoring. Nice one. Yeah. I mean, just to share a quick story myself, I'm, I'm working with a mentor back in Australia in the recruitment world. And he said to me, it's like, Adam, you've been a goal scorer your whole life, like getting deals. Now I need to grow a team. Now I need to grow a business. That skill set is so different from just doing the recruitment thing. So it's a, it's a challenge. You know, I think you grow from, from these challenging experiences and it's, it's been super rewarding. So I can definitely relate to that kind of change in, in mentality. Um, we have another question here from Zashan, who's uh, presenting a bit later. Uh, good to see you, Zashan, in the, in the Q and A there, bud. Uh, Zashan has asked, what was the biggest challenge in switching from an engineering role to management for you there? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, so I think for myself, it's really the, the mental uh, switch almost. Um, and so as an individual contributor, um, you know, the most important thing for, for me was to be able to, to deliver, um, to, for myself as an individual computer, to deliver kind of the project that I'm working on, that, you know, whatever product or features that I was working on. Um, being a manager is no longer about me. Um, so it's no longer about myself um, developing, you know, some features. It's the productivity of the entire team that is uh, important. Um, and so as, you know, one gets more and more senior, even uh, it's no longer even just about you know, the, the team that you're responsible for. Um, so very concretely, you know, if, if you're a PE, for example, um, you're no longer looking at just the results from your engineering team. It's the results from the entire organization. How do you partner with other functions like product or marketing and so on to make sure that the company as a whole delivers? Um, but, you know, to, to sum it up, really the switch for me is like, you know, looking at my individual contribution, um, making sure that myself is effective versus the uh, results of the entire.